Lecture 3 focuses on where EMI is conducted around the world. As I've noted, internationalisation and English medium instruction in the 21st century are inextricably intertwined as universities turn to Englishization in order to internationalise. A side effect of internationalisation, as noted, is the rapid emergence of EMI in higher education around the world. Wilkinson notes that EMI programmes have become commonplace in many institutes of higher education where English is not the native language. EMI has boomed in recent decades in universities in order to prepare students for the linguistic demands of an English-speaking global market, as well as to increase the international profile of the university. And in a later lecture, I will explore the main driving forces behind the growing global phenomenon of EMI. Englishization and internationalization have occurred so rapidly that it's estimated that half of the world's international students are learning through the medium of English. EMI has become one of the most significant trends facing universities in non-native English-speaking countries. And as Dearden notes, we now have a worldwide shift from English being taught as a foreign language to English being the medium of instruction. EMI has been described as a galloping phenomenon, now considered pandemic in proportion. It's been described as the most significant trend in educational internationalization. And as McCarroll referred to it, it's like an unstoppable train, like a Shinkansen, that's just going ahead and ahead. And all we can do is ensure that at each stop our passengers get off safely. As I've noted, initial growth was in Europe, where we saw a staggering 1,115% increase in EMI provision in 13 years. Recent years have witnessed growth in places like China and Japan. One third of Japan's universities offer some form of EMI. Over 30 offer full degree undergraduate programmes and around 70 offer graduate full degree ETPs. In Japan, EMI provision at university has doubled in the past 20 years. In China, of the 135 universities across mainland China, 132 had provided EMI courses or programmes by 2006. This averages around 44 courses per institution. The ministries of education in both China and Japan have been very active in the last 10 to 15 years in a bid to foster an EMI culture within their respective systems of higher education. EMI then is clearly a global movement. Initial growth was in Europe, but it's really become a worldwide movement. There is certainly an EMI boom emerging in many East Asian nations with the expansion of what Galloway and Rose have called internationalisation at home programmes. In Japan, there's been a string of government funded policies to promote growth in EMI provision. The rise in provision in places such as Japan and China is also having a knock on effect in places like Taiwan as they strive to remain competitive with their neighbours. EMI is also becoming a common trend in the Asia-Pacific. One survey on the EMI provisions in 55 countries conducted by Dearden concluded that the general trend is towards a rapid expansion. This expansion of EMI has led to a growth in research on the EMI phenomena in places such as Turkey, the Middle East and throughout Southeast Asia marking a spread of EMI from the traditional EMI hotspots of the Netherlands and Northern Europe. In short, EMI is becoming pervasive throughout the expanding circle, countries where English is traditionally taught as a so-called foreign language, and it's becoming particularly pronounced in the Asia Pacific. To conclude lecture three then, we have witnessed a rapid emergence of EMI in higher education around the world in recent years. 
EMI has now become commonplace in non-Anglophone settings. There's been an EMI boom and it has been labelled as one of the most significant trends facing universities in non-native English speaking contexts today. Initial growth was in Europe. The EMI has become a worldwide phenomenon. As McCarroll called it, EMI has become an unstoppable train. Universities are rapidly expanding EMI provision and in Japan, EMI provision at university level has doubled in the past 20 years. Thank you for watching.